colossal. So bird. this is what you do with your energy. We we'll stop feeding you because of that. <laughs> and we're on. Quit wasting my energy. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm Pixie. And I'm Sam. And you're listening to Nerd Talk, or possibly watching it, if you know. You're in, in the, the future. future. <laughs> yup. Alright, you want to check the video one more time, make sure that it's positioned right? It, is, it is videoing okay. right now. Yeah, let's hope my head's getting cut off a little bit, though. I'm going to move it. So while we adjust our camera, and I connect Oops. to our webpage. Whoopsie. Wherever that okay, is. Okay, I hope that's not too much. Let me back. <laughs> yeah, that's way too much. Dang it! I, I cannot find the happy medium here. I'm gonna stand here. And you tell me when. When. Okay. So, listeners. Tonight, we are not reviewing a first-person or a third-person shooter, for that matter. Holy crap! This is different. Instead, we're talking about robots beating people up. Well, no, beating, beating other other robots up. up. <laughs> and negligent parenting. Yeah. I don't know how much how much time we're gonna, gonna spend talking about that. To be honest, dude, I got some comments about that. Who okay, cares? Fair enough. But tonight, and cause is on. So we will be reviewing Real Steel, the latest Hugh Jackman feel good robots beating the crap out of each other in film. That should be a genre. Feel good robots beating the crap out of each other. So yeah, that thing, we went to see it. You guys should see it too, but we'll get to that in the review. Um, also, no game review this week, but hey, we've got one planned for the next three weeks, which is kind of awesome. So first up for next week, we will be reviewing Disgaea 4. You're going to go get that again. Yep, it, it's going to be confirmed. We are going to be reviewing that. Uh, followed by the week after, we, we're going to actually fulfill our request here. We will be reviewing... Chef Wired you presents Charles Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Guide. Yep, that, that is on the review plate. We've got it uh, sitting on my computer right now, and I will be playing through it over the next two weeks. And three weeks from now, one of us will be playing Gears of War 3. <laughs> What's that look for? <laughs> but I found a fun way to handle this. Yep. We're going to play Gears of War 3 from the perspective of... Carmine. That's right. A chapter-for-chapter chapter, uh, playthrough describing only what Carmine saw of the main characters. Because the poor Carmines, really. Okay. I have to put some kind of spin on this, because otherwise it's boring. <laughs> it is a brown... Oh, oh helps! <laughs> oh, God, the, the Gears of War drinking game would kill someone. Or you. <laughs> well, the Gears, of, kill you. the Gears of War 2 drinking game was like, anytime Dom complains about his wife being gone, mm -hmm. take a shot. Anytime Coltrane makes a stereotypical joke, take a shot. Anytime Baird says something snarky, take a shot. <laughs> That does sound like a recipe for living. Anytime out. Marcus says something about how horrible this war is, after having just shouted booyah from killing someone. That sounds like a very specific situation. You'd think it wouldn't come up too often, but... Six or seven times. Yeah. Or so horrible. Dude, you were just chainsawing a dude and a half a second ago and screaming about how much you were having fun. Also, you know... Well, I, I guess what you could do is, like, grab something, like, really low alcohol content. Way to go. This is why I load the admin page. Sorry, I was watching the new Avengers trailer beforehand, and, yeah, totally had the sound on. That, and I think we have to have the sound on in order to uh, play the intro. No. No? No. All right, then. That's for your benefit. I'm wrong. Because otherwise you wouldn't know when we're on. Anything good in chat so far? Uh, fist pumping. Woo! Chainsaws. War as hell. <laughs> There's... The, the uh, chat seems to be having fun with uh, homonyms. Real Steel, the movie about fishing poles and theft. Thank you, Pyro. Nice. But you missed it, because you weren't signed in in time. But now I am, so yeah. Volume is a bit low, huh? 
I will see what we can do about that. If anything. This thing, right? Tell me if I'm about to break this by turning up the volume. Yeah, no, go ahead. All right, testing, testing, testing. A little more. You want to be in the yellow. Okay, how's that? Better? Worse? More likely to explode? All right. Pyro said we were perfect a second ago, but... Eh. What I, was, I don't know how it got that low, unless you broke it. I break everything, give it enough time. You do. That's, I don't know why I give you the machine that's got all the important bits on it. Right? You'd think this would be a bad idea. Oh, you know what You know what else is, uh, you know what else we need to talk about? To kill a DJ. Yeah, because we're going to be seriously hounding on this for, like, months. Dude, it's, well, next, a month. it's next month. Um, Tuesday, November 8th, from noon to 6 p.m., the two of us are going to be on the air for six continuous hours. Fundraising for Advocate Hope Children's Hospital Family Assistance Fund. Yep. Uh, we've been given some awesome donation items, which you can bid on uh, over on at uh, nerdtalkshow.com slash donate. Um, there's a little auction page that we've got set up there. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't even have to register for any sort of site or anything. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Um, there's there's i got to update a couple of the pictures for like the bead sprites and whatnot, but... That, that, that'll be easy. Also, we will be getting more bead sprites. I confirmed that today. So we will have the new Star Wars. When I have them, they will go up. Until then, I've got these, and that's what's up. <laughs> also, hey, we're kind of changing my contribution. So here's what we're switching this to. Um, instead of a War Machine box, because realistically, that's setting a, a buyer up for potentially spending a lot more money money that most people might not want to spend on a whole war machine army. Uh, we're going to switch it, and instead of buying and then painting a Malifaux faction of the winner's choice, or, sorry, a war machine faction of the winner's choice, we will instead be giving away a painted Malifaux starter set. So, uh, one of the main reasons that I want to is switch it, this was... Is it going to still be, like, winner's bidder's choice, or yep. what? Yeah, you get to pick, uh, if you win this auction... You can pick one of the available 20 Malifaux starter boxes. Actually, sorry, uh, 24. Mm -hmm. Forgot the, uh, the henchmen. They're in the running, too. Mm -hmm. So you can pick one of these starting 24 boxes, which retail for between $30 and $40. Ish. Yeah. Be Average. Between those two. Um, and I will personally paint them and then ship them to you. All built and prettified. Yep. And... Uh, Hey, I may even do some custom base work on them, depending on what it goes for. You know, I'll, I'll go ahead and make a commitment now. If the thing goes for, say, more than... If it goes for more than $65, I'll, uh, I'll get some custom bases from Dragon Forge and make them look ultra pretty. Yay! Otherwise, I'll just do a, right, um, uh, a basic job. The, this means now, now that you've put this commitment out here, now I have to sit you down after the show and we have to actually go about programming that option into the auction yep. bit. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if it goes for more than $65, I'll get some Dragon Forge bases and uh, and paint those up, too. I don't know what they... What, what do you want us to talk about magic for, Eha? Yes, Innistrad came out. It is the OP, and we don't have money for cards. <laughs> I so don't have money for cards. You know what I ate today? Some cookies and a bag of chips before I came to your house and ate your food. And then she scarfed my leftovers. Um, so yeah, we'll talk more about Innistrad when we've had more of a chance to play it. As it stands right now, um, <laughs> as it stands, we both own a starter deck for Innistrad and have gotten to play it. And uh, yeah, vampires are, are more OP now. Yeah. Vampires have gone crazy. Also, red vampires are kind of sweet. Red vampires that go nuts and continuously become more powerful if they happen to hit you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the vampire starter deck is definitely the winner out of that lot. Despite the fact that it's the only one you played? Just looking over the other lists. Mm. Vampires is the, like, I'm going to win. Well, there's that. Um, so we've got a few few of the auction sites up. Uh, Eho's trying to bribe me with amazing cards. <laughs> Um, I'm also going to be doing a yoink, raffle. 
So here. the Galloping Ghost Arcade uh, oh, do I have those with me? was nice yeah, enough to donate three day passes to us. Which I don't have on my person. And seeing as that's kind of a local thing for only if you're in the Chicagoland area, we figured that it'd be easier to just do a personal raffle rather than, say, try to auction these with the rest of the stuff. Mm -hmm. So if, if you know Pixie or me or want to contact us after the show, you can actually purchase raffle tickets. They're $3 per ticket, or you can get two tickets for $4. Um, so each one will give you a chance to win one of the three um, passes. Or I suppose if you get really lucky and or have bought a crap ton of tickets, it is possible that I could draw your name three times, but... Yeah, these don't have a specific day that they would have to be used. Um, um, you can use the day passes whenever you want to show up at the Ghost. Yes. And basically, the, the thing with the Galloping Ghost, as we've mentioned many times is that you did the only thing you would pay for to get in there other than like food if you wanted it there but um all the machines are free play so all you're paying for is admission and so if you have one of these passes in theory you could walk in there and not spend a dime for an entire day of gaming awesomeness so thank you very much to doc for donating those yep we're gonna have a long list of sponsors this year aren't we all right then yay so on on more levels of random things that we've done lately, um, we totally hit up the... Uh, do we have any more, uh, any more to kill a DJ <laughs> stuff? Yeehaw's like, I, I would totally bid for those, but they don't charge me for entry anyway. And I'm yeah, kind of having the same issue with there. you. Is it's like, they're, they're, I don't remember the last time they charged you to go in either. No, because I'm awesome. I'm all kinds of Chicago internet famous. You no. still charge me. <laughs> <laughs> And shoot, I never even show up by myself. Right? You usually bring a crowd. <laughs> so yeah, um, do we have any more? <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm choosing to interpret I'm, yeah, the worst Yeehaw, way you're possible. giving me so many horrible <laughs> jokes that I can make, but I'm gonna hold back on this one. Um, wow. Right? Just a little evil. Wow. <laughs> Timing. Um, so yeah, do we have any more To Kill a DJ business for this week, or should um, we move on? Uh, yeah, I think the newest thing is the raffle for the Galloping Ghost Arcade. And so, yeah, I, I can, in theory, take online stuff for that. You could, in theory, not interact with me at all if you gave me your address and I could just mail you the thing, but yeah. honestly, it would be a lot easier this way. Anyone um, who's thinking about doing the miniature auction thing... Uh, if you're really wondering about the quality of the models you'll get, uh, just send me a message, and I guess I can send you a picture, a picture of some of the models that I've done. If you're all like, these need to look great. So, yeah, that's a thing. Um, I guess we can move on then. So I suppose we can. Over the weekend, we attended the at least one day of the Games Plus auction. The Auctions! Yep. We are all about the auctions lately. Yeah, the biannual gaming well, auction that they do. Well, the children. And theirs is for... Theirs money. is for the rent, <laughs> as I recall. That is how they pay their rent every year. Okay, then. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, the Games Plus auction. Uh, Games Plus, for those of you who don't know, is a game store up in uh, Mount Prospect, Illinois. Uh, we're specifically talking about, like, miniature games, uh, card games, board games. Not exactly game by the definition of Galloping Ghost. Um, the day that we went was specifically... <laughs> laugh, laughing at chat comments. Yeah. The day we went was specifically the role-playing game auction. So... Tons and tons of books were up for auction, like ridiculous amounts of books. Uh, Cosmic had joined us for it and managed to get, like, he got most of the Shadowrun 3rd Edition set for $1 to $2 each. I, I was really impressed by the kind of deals he was getting on these. So, um, basically the way it works is they do this twice a year. And about a month before the auction takes place, you can fill out a form and start bringing them stuff. You, you just sign the minimum that you want for each item, box it up, take it to them. They hold it for you for up to a week before the auction. 
And then on the day of the auction, they actually bring in a professional auctioneer to help them sell off this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they they have the whole uh, the whole card system. You hold up your card to bid on things, mm -hmm. and you can either pay cash directly, and they'll just bring you the item after you win it, or you can get yourself put on a tab, where they'll take the item in the back, and then charge your card at the end of the evening. Which could be really dangerous for someone with little spending control. Right. Cough, cough, Sen. I didn't buy a thing, actually. There were a couple things I was like, eh, I could totally see myself going for that, but I didn't. I thought you bought, like, a thing. No, I did not buy a thing at that auction. Huh. No, Cosmic is the one who cleaned up. <laughs> Whoops. So, uh, yeah, really, if, if you've got a... If you've got old gaming supplies, old RPG books, old miniatures, and live in within driving distance of Mount Prospect, totally check out when they do this. They, they always post on their website when it's going to be. I think the next one is scheduled for March. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's totally great. And this is the first one I've actually gotten to go to. Also, I've if you're going to pick up those things on the cheap. Cause, yeah. I, I've sold stuff at the previous ones, and the way they handle selling in it is... They will give you the full amount that your item sells for in store credit, or you can take half of the half of what it sells for as cash. Mm -hmm. You have to pick one or the other for your whole thing. Um, yeah, that I really liked it. I had a lot of fun. For some reason, I'm finding I really enjoy going to auctions. Like I went with uh, Yeehaw to a, a an arcade cabinet auction and just had a blast, despite the fact I didn't buy anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's really it's really fun to watch, especially like all that energy and like the guys going through it. It is all uh, well, this is what these books especially are. Especially with the gamers because they're cracking jokes at each other. It's a really fun audience. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they held up four packets of uh, of player materials for a game. Actually, no, it was five. So it was like for you and your five players, and like players don't read. Mm -hmm. They make the DM do it. Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was very energetic, it was very, um, I wouldn't say fast-paced, because some of it was like, no takers, oh, I'll pay a dollar for it. Yeah, <laughs> they went through, like, a stream of 25 things with no takers, and they also went through a stream of, like, 25 things that the store owner had purchased. Just like, I'll buy that for a dollar, and Just then like, resell it for, like, 30 times that much. Brad comes in and is like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, watching the store owner buy stuff. <laughs> he looked a little bit like Bill Gates to me. He does, yeah. They're, actually, that's the, me out that's the general bit. manager, not the owner. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I don't know. It's really fun. Next year, I definitely plan on going on the role-playing game day and on the miniature day. I know you wanted to go this year, but time constraints didn't allow for it. Yeah, time constraints and just the fact that I'd driven up to Mount Prospect three times that week. No, no, it was Sunday. It was a new week. It would have been a new week, but I don't want to drive up to Mount Prospect at all this week. <laughs> no, not happening. No, Close. no. Let's see your car make the trip. Oh, wait. It already has. <laughs> so, yeah. That that was the thing. Um, really, if you're in, if you're a gamer in Illinois, there is no reason not to drive up to Mount Prospect for this thing. Unless you live at like the very southern tip of Illinois, I guess. Then you can take a plane. Ride the bus. I don't know. Do buses go that way? I don't. Yes, there is a the Peoria Charter goes from southern Illinois all the way north. I don't know these things. Lived in Bloomington. Okay then. So yeah, um, I guess we can go to our review then. So Since we've been, you know, kind of dancing around it for 20 minutes, sure. Well, yeah. So yeah, um, <laughs> Real Steel was released uh, October 6th. Oh, sorry, that's in Australia. Uh, Real Steel was released... North America. Yeah, the thing. Okay, so today's the 11th. It was released on the 7th. Yeah. Okay. There we are. Um, it stars Hugh Jackman, and that's pretty much the only person in this movie you're going to recognize. No, no. The kid was also young Thor. Okay, so <laughs> Hugh Jackman's still the only person you're going to recognize. 
yeah, there, there's no one recognizable in this movie apart from Hugh Jackman, and I think that's part of what makes it great. Like, it... And it didn't even didn't it didn't even focus on Hugh Jackman all that much. Like the camera left Hugh Jackman every chance it got. They only had one gratuitous shirtless scene with Hugh Jackman, which I was surprised at. But I guess it's supposed to be a family movie, so fits the salary, right? So uh, yeah, uh, directed by Sean Levy, which Sean Levy's previous movies surprisingly are like all light-hearted family romantic comedy kind of things. It's kind of frightening. Like, okay. Big Fat Liar, Just Married, Cheaper by the Dozen, The Pink Panther, Night at the Museum, Date Night. Wow, some of these are really bad. In fact, most of these are really bad. So, it's kind of like against all odds that, you know, this turned out as well as it did, really. Right? Because I remember earlier this year... When we saw the trailer for this originally, I was laughing my head off. I was like, this is going to be so terrible, we have to go see it. <laughs> oh, it's Rock'em Sock'em Robots, the movie. Of course we had to see it. Right? Like, even a week ago, just a week ago when, I, when, I, when we committed to going to see this, I was like, it's going to be so bad. But it's not. And that's the most shocking thing. We're like, we're surprised how adequate this is. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm not going to declare, like, best movie ever, but I had a great time. Um, so let's see. Uh, it's based on a short story from 1956. <laughs> Which is kind of weird. Yeah. One of the things you're going to notice first about the movie is that the the effects in this movie I would definitely describe as toy-tastic. Like, they, they're going to make toys for every single one of these robots, and you know it. And you know they're going to make a version of Rock'em Sock'em Robots with these robots. Yeah. There, there's going to be a, uh, what was it, an ambush ver uh, versus Noisy Boy Toy. You know that's coming up. Oh, especially Noisy Boy with all the lights and the loud yellow Japanese characters on the purple background. Oh, that's got toy written all over it. Yep. So I the the ugly like main character robot, not so much. Yeah, because Adam, Adam is short. Adam is short. And that's, Adam is scuffy. And that's really Adam's cheating dirty. in Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Yeah. What the heck? My robot just keeps punching over his head. Well, we had to make it to scale. So I, I guess we can go over the plot. Um, it's 2020 and humans don't box anymore because humans have limits that make it less fun. Because apparently people just really want to watch gore. And so robots can destroy the crap out of each other. I gotta say, to like, death. watching boxing movies versus watching actual boxing, the two don't seem to have anything in common. Because, mm. like, you watch actual boxing and they, like, occasionally take a couple swipes at each other. They're but everyone's close. being really careful. Well, the closest thing I could come to, like, an analogy is, to, like, the MMA type of fights. Like yeah. The UFC. Those, they beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, but, like, actual but boxing? This, but, no. see, the, the, the robots take it a step further because there's, like, decapitation. And yeah, it, it's expected that in every robot fight they're going to tear each other to shreds. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a robot fight that was just, yep, The first and robot fight we down. witnessed was a robot against a really angry bull, and it lost limbs. <laughs> yup. The bull apparently just tore the robot to shreds and oddly enough, didn't get hurt, which, hmm, I, I, we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, so Hugh Jackman plays uh, Charlie Kenton, who used to be a, a really uh, serious boxer. He was a contender. He got to fight uh, world champions. Never won. Mm -hmm. He was, like, the second best. Um, but with human boxing being unpopular now, he switches to... Robot boxing, where he controls the robots via a uh, handset. It's so basically like an And is spectacularly game. bad at it. He's also spectacularly bad at financial management. Yeah, like, in the first 
half hour of this movie, he manages to lose not only his kind of crappy robot ambush, he also manages to lose Noisy Boy, who is apparently this big famous robot mm -hmm. who got shipped overseas for some reason. Mm -hmm. Loses both of them. Like, horrifically badly. And those things are, like, you'd think the, the like, main source of your livelihood or whatever you'd take better care of, but... Yeah, no, he, he kind of just throws these two things away like it's nothing. He loses the bull be or he loses to the bull because he gets distracted waving at some women in the audience. Mm -hmm. And he loses Noisy Boy because he didn't bother to learn the controls. You'd think that would be important. Yeah, no, he gets the thing and then goes to fight with it later that evening like it's a Pokemon or something. And he's just going, well, what are all these defaults in here? That's fine. I don't know what they do, but I'll just use them all. Shouting out commands that he doesn't understand. Go left, go right. Violently explode. Boom. Well, it did that one. So, Is that like a Voltorb self-destruct? Yeah, he lost so bad that the robot's head got embedded into the ceiling. That should say something. No, no, they mounted it there. Really? Yeah. I thought it got knocked off he and got, landed there. No, he, it got knocked off. And he then, sold it to Yeah, the, he sold it to the arena so that they could mount it there. Nice. Nice. Um, so while he's failing at being a boxing promoter, fate decides that he needs to suck at something else, so they give him his son back. Uh, apparently his ex-girlfriend of like ten years or whatever... Um, Who he this... knows he had a kid with. This isn't a surprise to him that this child exists. She, she dies, although it's never said what she died of, so I started making up her, uh, horrific stories in my head about how, like, she accidentally got decapitated by a robot, and that this should really be traumatic. No, because the child is, like, a huge fan of, like, robot boxing. That's why it's so tragic. Mm. She was at a robot fight, and, and, well, one of the robots missed. You would think he would be a little less enthusiastic about it if that were the case, though. Again, still why it's so tragic. Um, so, Charlie has his son, uh, Max, who he's never actually spent any time with, brought to him, and within five minutes decide or no, he doesn't actually meet the kid before he decides to sell them to the, to, to the kid's- the kid's aunt and her rich-ass husband. Yep. Well, basically, he sells it to, he sells the rights to have custody of the kid to, um, the rich-ass husband. She's not supposed to know. Yeah, she can't know that her husband paid a ton of money for this child, which you'd think that wouldn't be a thing. She doesn't seem too bothered by it later. I don't think she would be. The, the hey, you really want this kid. All right, I'm going to throw down my own money to get you this kid. Mm -hmm. Ta-da. Why would you be angry about that? She doesn't like, seem too bothered how, lately. How it, dare you have out. to pay for this one? I want a new one. Whatever. What? Um, but basically, there's, like, this stipulation that, like, the guy doesn't want to have the kid around just yet because they've got a vacation in Italy to be going to, being rich assholes and all. Like you do. So he agrees to take the kid for the summer in exchange for $100,000. I'd babysit a kid for $100,000 for three months, just saying. 24-7? Well, he has to sleep part of it. Kids are lazy. I don't know what kids you've been interacting with, but... Mostly lazy ones. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Max gets t to spend time with his deadbeat idiot father and watch him fail at robot boxing. And you know, be like, no, here, this is what you should do. Nope. Like, it, it's amazing. In in 24 hours of meeting his own son, he manages to sell him. Tell him that he sold him. Just flat out tell him that, yeah, I sold you. <laughs> um, lose the robot that he bought with the money that he sold him with. <laughs> and nearly kill him by having him fall off of a cliff. Well, to be fair, that was the child's fault. He was like, hey, look out, there's a cliff there. And the kid went, what? The kid looked at his feet and then fell. What did you want him to do? Move? He tried to. No, he looked at his feet and he looked behind him at the cliff and went, that's a cliff. And then he fell down it. 
Yeah, I forgot to mention, he also takes the kid on a, uh, on a, I wouldn't, yeah, it is a breaking and entering now that I think about it. He totally broke the lock on that door. Yep, into the junkyard to steal on a robot. Well, to steal parts for a robot. They didn't expect to find a whole one, so I guess we should move on with the plot. Um, they find this busted up robot named Adam, and the kid- It was originally built as a Generation 2 sparring robot, meant to take a lot of hits but not dish anything out. And, uh, Max decides that, yes, I can dig this out and fix it up, and Charlie kind of leaves him for the entire evening to dig him out on the side of a cliff by himself during a (laughs) rainstorm all night, not coming to look for him at all. And when he comes back, he is filthy and so mad. Father of the year, really. Like, that, that scene was just amazing negligence. But, yeah, so, like, he comes back and is all like, what? The kid's just like, Fah. Yeah, the the kid, I'll definitely say I went into this movie planning on hating this child. Yeah, child actors tend to have that effect on you. Especially when you're trying to play them off as, oh, they're sarcastically charming. Mm-hmm. No, that has never worked in a movie. At no point has the kid been like, I'm witty and sarcastic and still enjoyable in this role and believable as an actual child. This one kind of pulls it off. I, Dakota Goyle, you, you have my respect, sir. Well, young sir. He, he's sarcastic. He doesn't make stupid pop culture references, which I like. Those scenes where he's trying to be the robot fanboy mm-hmm. are totally believable. It's really cool to see him like interacting with the robots and having fun with it. The, the scenes where he's warming up to his new robot and taking care of it and trying to teach it are, are believably cool. The scenes where he's trying to be funny, like his caffeine addiction, is totally great. Mm-hmm. It, it actually does come off as a funny part See, of the character. kid's not sleeping. That kid doesn't. The scenes where he's acting angry at his father because he should be are all believable and taken to the degree that, the degree that they should. Yeah, that, that's a great point, old. Why didn't uh, DCFS at any point investigate what's going on with this kid? Maybe it's not there in the future, because Peter sure isn't. Yeah, no. The, the opening scene where a robot punched a bull across the side of its head, definitely not PETA friendly. Nope. And yet the bull was totally okay goring this robot steel through its chest. No damage to the bull whatsoever. So, yeah, continuing, um, Adam gets into some uh, unsanctioned outdoor street fights. Well, underground arenas would be the more accurate description. Mm -hmm. And, oddly enough, with Max's work that he's doing on the robot, as well as Charlie teaching the thing to fight, it starts doing really well. And follows the basic plot of every single boxing movie. Ever. Up, up until he gets a title shot by magical coincidence. Actually, I believe it was through a child screaming after an exhibition fight. But, uh, yeah, the, the little scrappy guy gets a fight against the big, big mean champion. Who, who's evil, who's evil just for the sake of being wealthy. Apparently people with money are just jerks in the world of movies. So, like, you're not going to have, like, a Bill Gates who who made their money through... Well, Steve... Never mind, bad example. Or you're not going to have a, uh... I'm trying to think of one not evil, non-evil rich person. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Moving on. So, uh, yeah, am I the only one that left this movie thinking that the kid was going to become, like, the next Tony Stark? I guess you might have been, because that thought never occurred to me. I don't know, the kid's obsessed enough with robots, I could see him making himself a robot suit. Although that'd be a little creepy, seeing as his robot was apparently sentient. Which made it really sad! They kept hinting at it or something, which one would just make the whole, like, robot boxing thing really, really unsettling. But uh, they never come right out and say. Yeah, because, like, right down to Adam's first fight, they've left the hint that, hey, 
Adam might be sentient. Adam might know what's going on and be able to respond on his own. Why are we letting him get the tar beat out of him? Well, he has no control over it. It's really creepy in that Because you can apparently switch, you can apparently flip a switch in his back that will take control away from him. Well, it's, there's, there, no, there was the, like, controls for, like, the little pad, mm-hmm. which is what the kid was using at first, and yeah. then there was... The, and then that... they switched it to the voice control, well, there's and that. then you could flip that, and he would go into shadow, shadow mode, mode, where, where he, he could apparently think. No, it was just he was just mimicking what was in front of him. What but was, that's where he it's started like the doing. Connect. But he started doing other things while in shadow mode. He would occasionally change what he was doing on his own. I did not say any of that. Yeah, when he was in shadow mode, he would occasionally just kind of decide to do his own thing. Maybe it was during that one pee break I took, but somehow I doubt it. Just saying, like, watching Adam get the tar beaten out of him with the understanding that, oh, he's kind of sentient. Why are we letting him get up and keep going? He he clearly doesn't want to get up. Too bad. Do it anyway. Too bad, robot. Especially during the final fight where, like, he's getting decimated for five rounds of this thing before he finally starts fighting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um... If you liked Rocky, you'll like this. If you like robots, you will love this, because unlike the other major robot movie I can think of off the top of my head, Transformers, you'll be able to tell what's going on in the fight scenes in this. They are really well choreographed. Like, somehow Sean Levy is really good at at boxing. I had always heard from people who make movies and interviews that Filming boxing is particularly hard because you have to show every detail of both the the lead up to the punch and the reaction to it. You need every aspect of that shot. Well, Heavy apparently pulls off a really good job, better than like Michael Bay ever did in the Transformers movies, where you couldn't actually tell what was going on with these giant robots because they were so complicated. Like real steel. Gets it right in a lot of ways. The designs are good on every single robot. Like They're all unique. From Adam, who's just kind of basic and plated, up to, like, the mega armored Zeus, the, the ultimate robot, they all had their own technical features. They all had their own little cool details. Mm-hmm. Like, I specifically loved Noisy Boy's design. I thought he was awesome, that he became, like, literally a walking product placement after he got back from Japan. That was awesome. He, he definitely had his own flavor, which was neat. And then, of course, there's, like, un- underneath the, like, boxing thing, there's the whole, like, father getting close to the son thing. and Which, uh, my only problem with that is the level of douchebaggery that Hugh Jackman had to exhibit before he cleaned up in the least. Mm-hmm. Like, it was epically bad, and even at the end, or towards the end of the movie, when, like, the evil rich people make him a... A normal offer for the bot. Like, there was nothing sinister about it. They're just like, hey, we want to buy your robot. Here's uh, $100,000. I think it was two hundred. Okay. Here's $200,000. So the robot's worth twice as much as the kid. Well. You can't beat the crap out of the kid on a daily basis and expect it to keep taking it. Well, you could. <laughs> oh, no, they break eventually. They take a lot longer to fix. <laughs> You're right. We need to armor plate the kid. Basically. Um, That's hundred thousand dollars worth of the work right there. But like, even when the villains or make an works. offer for the robot, Jackman's like, "Yeah, take it, done. We'll buy a new one." The only reason it doesn't get sold is because it's technically the kid's robot. Mm-hmm. Epic level douchebaggery, really. Yeah. Well, but there's like a side romance thing with like the girl that he's renting from. Also kind of weird, yeah, so Charlie's coach when he was a boxer's daughter Yeah Apparently has a thing, or had a thing for him They had a a thing And now he's just kind of renting the gym that she used to run Mm -hmm. Which I have to wonder That he used to run, that she now runs Why even bother having a gym? Like, I understand it was for, like, nostalgia factors But no one boxes 
they've established this, and I really doubt that mm-hmm. ring could hold a robot. Yep. So this is a non-business. Basically. This is like I'm going to have a lint store <laughs> for all of your lint needs. <laughs> wow. I mean, Dylan's got a point, haha, Pokemon reference, but otherwise there was no reason for that to exist. Like, I could understand if she was running a, a robot repair facility for him, because that Which would make sense. Which is basically what the, the, what what the she gym was, was doing. Yeah. Yeah. She was fixing his robots for him, because apparently Charlie can't do it. You'd think being a robot... Bad career choice! You'd think being a robot fight promoter, you'd be able to fix a robot, but no, his son is apparently better than it. Than him at it. You see him at one point programming the robot in the back of the trailer and like the first thing that popped into my head was where would you learn to do that? Mm-hmm. But apparently it's the future and every kid has a degree in advanced engineering and physics or not physics, programming. Computer science. Yep. That, that's a thing. Just the year 2020, every 8 year old kid is going to have a degree in computer science. Okay. Wait, so there was one particular scene from that little, like, offshoot romance thing that, like, really bothered me. Or he, like... It, it, he he like, gets pummeled and then crawls into her bed. He, like, basically uh, kind of, like, goes into her bed, like, in the, he goes into her, like, house in the middle of the night, and then, like, kind of, like, slinks into her room and then just, like, goes into bed next to her. And, like, she's not awake for any of it. She did open her eye, look up, notice him, and then go back no, to bed. No, she didn't look up. She kind of fluttered her eyes open a little bit, but I, she didn't actually move. I think she figured out who it was, because if it was the robot, she wouldn't have a spine anymore, and if it was the small child, well, that wouldn't have caused her to wake up. I think she knew who it was. Those aren't the only three people in the universe, you know. So we're saying that she also, is Also, apparently... it's still not okay for him to do that, even th- even if she knows who he is. It's, d- 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 she, d- I'd, I'd still like it better if she were to, like, actually sit up and go, Oh, it's you. This is okay for you to be here. Fair Just enough. Just some sort of conscious acknowledgement. I see. Um, so they, they totally do the thing at the end of this movie where... Uh, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but, like... It, it, it is the little guy versus the heavy hitter. If you've seen any of these movies, you know how this goes. Because it wouldn't be a movie otherwise. Um. Yeah, it, but it does it very well. It doesn't overplay anything. They don't, they don't do the thing that I hate most in these sports movies. Where there's usually a conspiracy involved. Either yeah. more rides on the fight than just the fight itself. There's some kind of bet going on, or some side is cheating, or... I, I was expecting the kid to get kidnapped. I was waiting for it. Just like, yeah, the, the kid... The kid did get his ass kicked, though. Yup. But that was by bookies. <laughs> and, and, but by the Once time... Once again, he has a terrible father. But by the time the end happens, that has been resolved. Mm. That's not an issue. There's no threat during the actual fight. I don't fight. know. I saw that dude sitting in the audience, and I was like, oh, but, man. But by that point, he had nothing to do with the two main characters. Okay. That, that became a side plot at that point. Mm-hmm. He had kicked their butts, he had taken their money, and that was effectively a plot off of the side for two side characters in the movie. Mm-hmm. All that mattered during that final fight scene was... Can this little robot yeah. kick the big robot's our, butt? Our three good guys versus their three bad guys. That's all it was. Mm-hmm. You know, the Effectively, each team was the owner, a douchebag, and the robot. Because we've got the owner, which is the little kid and the Russian chick. We've got the douchebag, which is the Japanese engineer of Zeus, and Charlie. Mm. Who, that's the only character I hated in this whole movie. The Japanese engineer. I, he was annoying in every scene he was in. I think he was supposed to be. Right? And then you've got the two robots. Because so bo- he was only in two scenes! No, he had a lot more scenes than that. I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. So yeah, each team consists of the owner, a douchebag, and the robot. Yeah, over- <laughs> overall, I really liked Real Steel. I, I think this was a great movie. Um, I'm currently planning on getting it when it comes out on DVD. I do want to see what kind of extras would be on the disc for it. I, I will say that the special effects were well done. They yeah. Were, they, they, the robots looked solid. They looked like they actually had a presence. 
Mm -hmm. As opposed to like, every time this they, is so CG. Every time they moved or interacted with something in the environment, it had an impact. Mm -hmm. You could actually... It, it gave the illusion that this thing is actually here very well. The fights, as, as believable as a fight between two giant robots in the middle of a boxing ring can be, it looks really good. Yeah, that's right. At one point they fight in an abandoned zoo. I mean, it it's really cool. It's a cool movie. Which, which is weird, because this summer we've actually... Well, it's not summer anymore, but this year so far, we've actually had two movies that I would just describe as plain fun that everyone can enjoy. Uh, I don't know if everybody could enjoy Fright Night, but... I totally think everyone over the appropriate age could enjoy Fright Night. Because even people who aren't, like, major fans of the horror genre mm. could think that movie was cool, mostly because of Peter Vincent. Yeah... David Tennant was the best thing in that movie. And, and now this, which I think this is excellent. Like, um, I, I think uh, anyone in the appropriate age brackets would have a great time at this movie. The, the douchebaggery of the father is believable without going too over the top. I don't know, it was pretty over the top. Admitted, the selling your kid is pretty horrible. <laughs> that, that is a level beyond forgiving in most films. But, like, the reform act is believable. At no point does he go, like, squeaky clean good guy. His, ar his argument at the end of the guy. movie is, just give me a chance to make this one thing right. Mm -hmm. I'm still a screw-up. I'm still a terrible father. I just want to make this right. And at no point do they do the, yay, you get to keep the kid and you win the prize and you're super special awesome. No, at the end of the movie... The kid is still going with his uh, with his aunt with his aunt and uncle. The robot. And he's going to live a very cush life of rich snobbery and right? being spoiled. Charlie's still a douchebag. And still broke. Yup, he got nothing out of that fight, and he still has to pay to fix Adam. There you go. Nothing was resolved at the end of this movie, but it really didn't have to be. It's just good. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's our review of Real Steel. Totally worth seeing in theaters. I'm probably going to go again when it's in the uh, the cheap theaters. Just because I really enjoyed it. Actually, I really want to go see Fright Night one more time while it's at the cheap theaters. So, uh, yeah, picks, final opinions. It was fun with robots. If you, if you did... If you know some some like kid who like might have been into Transformers or whatever, they will go nuts. Yeah, no, this. we took our resident Transformer fan, and he was actually boxing in his seat. It was awesome. <laughs> he was like uh, like air boxing with like the characters on the screen. Yeah, he was, like, he, he yeah. was watching the final fight and actually air boxing with them. It was awesome. <laughs> we also had a friend who was like super serious, staring at the screen. We thought he hated it, and it turns out that like he was actually having a lovely time and got really into it. <laughs> Cosmic, we're looking at you. Yeah. He's just he's just sitting there the whole time, like... Yep, just staring at the screen intently, like he's watching a Hitchcock film. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's Real Steel. Uh, next week, we will be reviewing Disgaea 4. Well, mostly you. Mostly me. Because the life of a substitute teacher actually gives me time to do these things. And I am turbo busy taking yep. money from people for sick children. You cover the sick children, I'll make with the ha-ha. Make the ha-ha come out of your face. Well, hopefully their faces. I don't think people want to listen to me laugh for an hour. Ha-ha. So yeah, instead we will be... Yep, I'll be making demons and vampires do stuff on my little screen. I might make you play a fight or two, just so that you get an impression of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, inspect that kind of insanity. Also, insanity the week after will be Charles Barkley shut up in Jam Gaiden, which is for which it. is canon. Just in case you're wondering. And hey, we've got To Kill a DJ coming up. So if you've got ideas for things we should do for To Kill a DJ, go ahead and let us know. Pop by our forums or our Facebook. If you've got games you really want to see us review, you can always submit suggestions to us, and we will try to get to them as best we can. Or as quickly as we can. It's kind of a... Uh... It's kind of an if-we-can-get-our-hands-on-it kind of thing. So, yeah. For tonight, which is uh, Tuesday, October 11th, 
2011. The day after that pirating and pillaging guy's uh, holiday. Yup. <laughs> I'm Sen. I'm Pixie, and you've been listening to Nerd Talk. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>